While developing Black Ops 4, Treyarch was concerned that their players were too reliant on crutch perks, those being Quick Revive, Juggernaug, Speed Cola, and Double Tap. So, to encourage people to play with a more diverse perk setup, they found new ways to incorporate the original four into the gameplay. Well, today, I would like to tell you that the crutch perks are stupid, you don't need them, and I will demonstrate this by playing a match of zombies in every game, from World at War to Black Ops 3, without using them. We start with World at War. The map I chose to play was Darius. Since this game only has the original four, I would basically be playing without any perks. So I had to play it safe if I wanted to make it to a decent round. I bought the trench gun right away since it's one of the best guns in the game and it would make for a good safety weapon. And on my first spin of the box, I got an MG42, which I was a little nervous to use with its longer reload speed, but it was okay as long as I did a reload cancel. Because I wasn't buying perks, I used my points to get the Pack-a-Punch opened on round 6. I considered buying Double Tap since technically it's the 2.0 version that's a crutch perk, but I decided against it. I did, however, buy Quick Revive since it literally does nothing. From there, I just camped on the catwalk. I mostly used the MG42, but if I had to reload at a bad time, I would switch over to the trench gun to save myself. It was going pretty well, but I went for a drop at a bad time and died on round 18. Not a terrible round, but I would have gotten farther if I didn't risk it all for the Carpenter. Next up is Black Ops 1. Call of the Dead, Shangri-La, and Moon are the only three maps in the game to have four alternative perks, so I chose Shangri-La mostly because I felt like it. My plan was to get the power on as soon as possible, and then build up 7,000 points to buy PhD Flopper and then upgrade the 1911 to be my safety weapon. Thanks to the points you earned from the monkeys, I was able to get this done by round 5. Afterwards, I got Stamina Up, Deadshot Daiquiri, a Ray Gun, and then Mule Kick. The usual high round strategy for this map is to run trains in this room, but I am not an experienced Shangri-La high rounder, so I opted to run a big circuit around the entire map. I don't know if you can tell from this gameplay, but I did not feel safe. It's very close quarters, has a lot of obstacles, and these zombies coming out of the ceilings can two hit you really fast. I thought I'd feel more confident when I got the baby gun, but unfortunately I never would. I didn't realize how many zombies were behind me here, and so I would die on round 13. I know that Shangri-La is a more difficult map than Deriz, but I was not expecting it to be so much scarier than World at War. Then we move on to Black Ops 2. Map. Origins. I didn't have much in mind for a high round strategy, I just wanted to be ready for the round 8 Panzer. The shield was easy enough to acquire, but I was not lucky enough to get the Ice Staff in time, so I would have to take him on with regular weapons. But at least I had stamina up so that I could run away faster. Fortunately, he's not as strong as his Black Ops 3 counterpart, and I defeated him rather easily. From then on, the game was actually pretty easy, and I think that the shield was a big part of that. I got the rest of the perks from the Wonder Fizz, which would be Deadshot, Mule Kick, and Electric Cherry. It felt blasphemous to not take PhD, but I wasn't really planning on using explosive weapons. I also upgraded the Mauser to be my Panzer Killing Gun, at least until I replaced it with a Ray Gun Mark II. There was just one major issue, though. I was having a lot of trouble saving zombies at the end of snow rounds. They just kept dying on me before I could get the last ice staff part. So on round 16, I decided to build the fire staff instead. I knew that upgrading it was going to be risky without Juggernaug, so I waited until round 18 so that I at least would have done as well as the World at War game if I were to die here. And as expected, that's exactly what happened. It was a combination of a badly timed reload and me thinking the zombie in front of me was dead. but. This was the easiest game so far, which I did not expect, but I know I could have gone a lot longer if I didn't try to upgrade the fire staff so late. Now if you thought Black Ops 3 was next, you'd be wrong. There's actually this silly little game called Advanced Warfare that came out the year before, so I would be playing a match on Outbreak next. This game doesn't have the crutch perks, instead it has a different crutch, the exosuit, and that's what I wouldn't be using. And of course, no exosuit means no perks at all, except for exo revive, but I still chose not to use it. I didn't have much of a strategy for this match, I just tried to survive. And honestly, not having the exosuit made this zombies mode feel pretty different. It was a lot more grounded, and I was more aware of the creepy atmosphere in this map. It was also nice to be immune to the EMZs. I really wanted a BAL-27 or an ASM-1, but I wasn't able to get those from the 3D printer, and because of how the game works, I needed to start upgrading something soon or my guns would quickly become underpowered. So I chose to upgrade my Ameli to Mark IV, but it gets this thermal sight that immediately made me regret investing 7500 points into it. 
Not long after, I had my back up against the door, but I wasn't too worried. My plan was just to open it when I got overrun, but unlike the other games where you can just immediately walk through a door when you purchase it, you have to actually wait for it to open wide enough for you to fit through, which is why I would die here on round 9. Honestly, I wish this match had lasted longer. It was kind of fun playing without the exosuit. Okay, now we're on the final game. Black Ops 3. The map I chose was Der Eisendraha. Once again, there's a zombie shield to use, which when paired with the 3 hit down system, makes playing without Juggernaug much less stressful. I got the perks Mule Kick, Stamina Up, and Deadshot by round 10, but because of the Wonder Fizz's inconvenient locations, I wouldn't get my fourth perk until round 15, which was Electric Cherry. I would have preferred Widow's Wine, but that's just what the machine gave me first. There were a couple close calls, but for the most part this match went pretty normal. I did start to feel pretty underpowered when I was finishing my bow upgrade, even with a ray gun and a repacked SMG, but that underpowered feeling went away as soon as I got the wolf bow. For the next several rounds, I was just blasting away the zombies while hitting the box for monkeys. The only reason I died is because this melee attack missed during an insta-kill, which quickly led to my death on round 23. So I played a match in 5 different zombies games without the original 4 perks and the rounds I achieved were 18, 13, 18 again, 9, and 23. Not bad for pretty casual matches, but definitely could have been better had I not made some simple mistakes. But it was fun to play with these more unusual perk loadouts. It made me use weapons and strategies that I normally wouldn't, and I think it does prove that you can play a good match of zombies without the crutch perks.